We believe we should be able to handle this. Tonight, turning the dial, Minnesota moves one step closer to reopening when you'll be able to dine in at restaurants again. And after more than two decades in business, a Duluth shop is closing their doors, saying COVID-19 was the tipping point. Plus, making cuts. St. Scholastica is having to make some tough financial decisions due to the pandemic. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. Minnesota leaders rolled out the next phase of reopening across the state. Starting June 10th, bars and restaurants can move inside and open at 50% capacity. Personal care businesses like salons can also bump up to 50% capacity. The same goes for churches. Fitness centers and gyms can reopen, but only at 25% capacity. Some entertainment venues can also open, like movie theaters and bowling alleys, but at 25% capacity. Public gatherings are capped at 250 people. Governor Wall says it's up to people to be responsible to practice social distancing and wear masks. We believe we should be able to handle this. We're looking at it. I'm not going to say, and I think Commissioner Mount can be the first one to say it, we can't get complacent and we can't get lazy around, around what will happen here. We're going to really need to once again ask people to help make this work. The state also addressed sports, saying some will be allowed to resume competition while others won't. It depends on the level of close contact involved. All the guidelines are laid out on the state's COVID-19 dashboard. Business owners will tell you today's announcement by the governor has been a long time coming. And some of them tell CBS3's Leanne Valdez they could not be happier. Good news has been a little bit hard to come by for the last few months. That all changed Friday when Governor Jim Walz loosened restrictions on indoor dining, gyms, and entertainment. This is a, a ray of sunshine on a very sunny day. President of Duluth Local Restaurant Association, Tony Bronson, says though it is nice to at least have outdoor dining, indoor dining is what the area restaurants specialize in. And indoor dining is where we have our best control uh, pieces in place. Restaurants will no longer need to be on Mother Nature's good side. We know that the weather could change uh, five minutes from now, but when we don't have indoor dining then to fall back on, that's a problem. Under Walls' order, establishments are able to operate 50% capacity indoors. Bronson says, it's not the main course, but it's a start. 50% indoors still isn't sustainable, but it gets us closer. It allows us to bring back more staff. For CrossFit Duluth, a fitness gym operating at 25% will help big time. Being open is going to help us financially. Normally, they would have 20 to 25 people per class. Under the new order, they're only allowing eight. We have space to spread people out. Everyone will have their own equipment. Though they've lost a few members during the shutdown, a couple have stuck around. We have a core group of people who are the most wonderful people in the world who have really helped us keep the doors open. And if you'd like to check out a full list of the new regulations during the Phase 3 of the Stay Safe Minnesota Plan, go on and head on over to our website, cbs3duluth.com. Meanwhile, Michigan is taking more steps toward reopening as well. Governor Gretchen Whitmer said today that hair salons and other personal care businesses can reopen statewide on June 15th. Governor Whitmer is allowing those types of businesses to open in the northern portion of the state starting next week. That's part of her geographically tiered approach to reopening. Indoor gatherings of 50 people and outdoor groups of 250 people will be allowed as well. Outdoor venues and events will be able to have up to 500 people, allowing for some graduation ceremonies. Whitmer called it another milestone in the safe reopening of Michigan's economy. And so we're learning to live with COVID-19. Every step of the way depends on people continuing to do their part. Whitmer expects to move the rest of the state to that next stage in the coming weeks. All right, let's take a quick look at the weather, Dave. Another sunshiny day across uh, at least Twin Ports today. And at least for most of the day, although we did have another round of rumbles of thunder earlier this morning that dropped a little bit of rain, and really only a little bit. Let's look at the chart here, Tony, see how much came across. Frankly, not that much. If we squint a little bit, we could say a tenth of an inch in Ely, and if we squint even farther, a tenth of an inch towards Grand Rapids, really just a trace for many towns. Not what we need to knock down the fire danger, but that problem could be solved 
perhaps by Sunday as a chance of rain comes around our region. Tonight, well, the rain chance is departing, so what we're going to get is a cool down as high pressure settles in to take temps down into the 60s for Saturday and Sunday too, but by Sunday a low pressure system forming farther to the west could be with us, and that brings in a pretty decent chance of rain. Our weekend forecast says partly cloudy tonight, partly cloudy and dry on Saturday, but cloudy and a 60% chance for rain on Sunday. Maybe a half inch could fall on Sunday. Maybe even a couple of severe thunderstorms would pop up. So we have to keep our eye on the situation because that Sunday rain chance could last until Wednesday with a Tuesday chance for another soaker coming around. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. New tonight at 6, both Twin Ports Police Departments are taking steps to address how they protect and serve. Since George Floyd's death in Minneapolis, there's been a new focus on the 8 Can't Wait movement. It lays out eight ways departments can reduce police violence, including banning chokeholds and requiring de-escalation tactics to be used. Superior Mayor Jim Payne says the city has adopted all eight proposals. Duluth Police Chief Mike Tuscan says his department has also adopted all eight, but there's still more work to be done. Mayor Emily Larson of Duluth today signed the Obama Foundation mayoral pledge to review and reform use of force policies. The city is holding a press conference on Monday to talk more about the process. Many area physicians took a knee in support of the Black Lives Matter movement in Duluth today. The White Coats for Black Lives protest happened today at Essentia's West Duluth Clinic. The silent protest involved more than 20 doctors from Essentia, St. Luke's, and Lake Superior Community Health. The doctors knelt for 10 minutes to represent the nearly 10 minutes that George Floyd had a knee on his neck. Jane Rudd is one of the doctors who organized the protest, and she says it's something she just can't stay silent about. We're supporting the movement that says that um, racism in our community is unhealthy. It's a risk to our patients, it's a risk to our friends and our family, and uh, we want to help in any way we can to show that we do not stand for it. Rudd also added she is concerned about how COVID-19 is disproportionately impacting the black community and said someone needs to stand up for their rights. University of Minnesota officials are recommending students come back to campus for the fall semester. They made the recommendation earlier today. Officials say they've developed extensive plans to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. These include social distancing, sanitation, and using a mask. More classes would also be scheduled in the evenings and on Saturdays to spread them out. The fall semester would end by Thanksgiving break. Officials say their recommendations can be adjusted if the situation changes. They also expect to give full details on any furloughs and pay cuts next week. The Board of Regents still needs to give their final approval on any plans. Meanwhile, COVID-19 financial losses are forcing the College of St. Scholastica to make more cuts. The college is reducing salaries for all staff making more than $36,000. The college is also lowering retirement contributions. 32 positions will also be cut. Some that are currently open won't be filled and others will be laid off. The college used the first half of their CARES Act bailout for emergency financial aid grants for students. This all comes after the college saw more than $5 million in financial losses. A Duluth business owner is closing his doors after 23 years in business and says COVID-19 was the tipping point. Spirit Bay Trading Company, located in Canal Park, is a Native American arts and crafts supplier. With retirement on the horizon, owner Terry Smith says he was already looking at downsizing his store once his lease was up in April. COVID-19 accelerated those plans. I didn't want to invest in, in, in a new location. Uh, not knowing what was going to happen. And I had thought about retiring anyway, so uh, it just came at the right time. Spear Bay's last day will be Monday, June 22nd. Smith is planning to hold an auction to sell the remainder of the items. Police have arrested a 29-year-old man after they say he pulled a gun on another man inside a home on the Iron Range. Police responded to the incident along Cuyuna Drive in Virginia just after 2 a.m. Friday. Inside the home, police found two children and a woman. They say the 29-year-old man was intoxicated. He was booked in the St. Louis County Jail on second-degree assault and terroristic threat charges. No one was hurt in the incident. Forest officials say a small wildfire sparked by a campfire north of Ely is now 100% contained. Firefighters responded to the flames near Crooked Lake in the Boundary Waters Canoe area Tuesday night. Officials say damage was limited to five acres. Crews say they will continue to monitor it over the next several days. No word whether anyone will be charged in connection with the fire. 
Still to come on live local CBS3 carving out conversation. How a chisel and a 200-year-old pine tree is helping a local man battle cabin fever. High temp today, 76 degrees, a slight decrease from yesterday. And another decrease does come our way for tomorrow. 60s for many towns for the weekend, followed by a warm and humid surge come Monday and several soaking rain chances for the week ahead. We'll talk about them after our break. Live, local, CBS3 News at 6 with Kristen Vockey, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. What's behind the curtain? Window treatments from concept to creation to installation. Bellinger Drapery Shades and Blinds. Shades above the rest. Garden mats eliminate 90% of the time spent working in the garden and increase a garden's productivity by 10 to 20%. Garden mats let air and water through but block sunlight. The pre-measured holes make planting a breeze. We help people grow 100% organic vegetables weed-free. Garden mats give us our summers back to do the things we love. Go to gardenmats.com. Got a tough job to tackle? New Holland has a full line of tractors to make sure you're ready to meet any challenge. From compact tractors and attachments to tractors ready to work on the farm, New Holland has the products and know-how to make sure you get the job done right the first time. With over 100 years of experience providing tractors for the home, farm, and everything in between, we have the solution to beat your demands. New Holland. We dance for healing, we dance for one another, for connection, in ways like no other, together, or even apart, we are resilient. We are resilient. The 2020 census is here, and we need to do our part for our people. Hi, my name is Kennedy, and I'm into social work. I graduated from Duluth East High School, and it's really nice to know that you have a local, affordable, two-year school to go to, especially if you don't know what you want to do. It's a great place to start out. Go to Lake Superior College. Northland, when you want the most new country, make the switch to Cat Country, 98.9 KTZO. I never met a girl like you. What makes you country? Number one for the most new country. Synergy. To us, it's the definition of what's behind the curtain. Discover what we can create together. Bellinger Draperies, Shades, and Blinds. Shades above the rest. Have you ever had a dream that is so real that it takes you a long time to wake up? Are you microdosing again? No. Well, maybe. <laughs> Well, that wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> oh, impressive. Yes! Yes! So here we are for some culture. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. Now, the CBS3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. This past week worth of beautiful weather for the most part, of course, has been gorgeous to look at, but out in the woods it's been dry, and that fire danger keeps going up. Today, northern Minnesota facing a near-critical fire danger, upper peninsula elevated just like it was yesterday, at least moderate towards high for Wisconsin. So we have to be careful with fire, at least for Saturday. Come Sunday, it may rain enough or we won't be outside at all, and that rain may be the solution to the problem because if we don't get enough Sunday, the rain chance sticks around through Wednesday. We'll talk about our hints on how much could come across in just a bit. Right now, we've got the current conditions at the airport. It's 72 degrees there. The relative humidity has bumped up a little bit to 34%, but that's still on the drier side. So westerly, northwesterly wind going 20 miles per hour, that's increased a little bit since we chatted last about a half hour ago or so. 
Uh, high winds aren't good for the fire danger either, but hopefully those will start to slow down as we get into tomorrow. Air pressure right now, 1,013 millibars, 29.92 inches of mercury. Current regional temperatures, not as warm as yesterday, but still warmer than normal. The norm is about 67, 68. We have 72 to 75 in the UP, and it's 75 for just about every town here in northwestern Wisconsin, including Oliver and Superior. 73 Moose Lake, 72 Two Harbors, 73 Grand Marais. But then you look into the arrowhead farther in, and it's dropping into the 60s. That's a sign of the cool down that's coming for tomorrow, which will drop many temperatures into the 60s and stay that way at least through Sunday before they resurge into the 80s with humidity come Monday. Monday may not be a pleasant day for many of us here. We don't mind it warm, but when it gets humid, uh, that's uh, not the best deal at all. Right now, higher pressure and control of our region is keeping the sky on the clear side and helping to chase away those morning showers that did come across parts of our area. What's going to be coming across here once we get into tomorrow? Well, cooler high pressure settling in. That's why temperatures will drop into the 60s. That also helps set up an easterly wind, so it'll be a double whammy. Cooler by the lake and cool air from Canada. But once we get into Sunday, a uh, fresh low pressure system starts to come our way. And after Sunday, this will help bring our temperatures back up. And it will also help bring us a chance for perhaps even a half inch of rain on Sunday. Not such a great chance for rain on Monday, but then a real soaker could come across for Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, this low could be tangling with moisture from uh, Tropical Storm Christabel down in the Gulf. So it could get pretty wet around here. Hopefully not flooding wet, but hopefully fire danger crushing wet. Tonight, eh, not wet. Clear to partly cloudy in Minnesota. Low temps anywhere from about uh, 44 to 50 degrees. Taking a look at Wisconsin, Michigan, about 46 to 49 with a partly cloudy sky there. Tomorrow's high temps with a partly cloudy sky, Wisconsin, Michigan, 64 by the lake to 75 inland. In Minnesota, 55 to 67 by the lake, low 70s inland, partly cloudy sky. A partly cloudy sky that becomes mostly cloudy on Sunday with that new low, 60% chance for showers and storms Sunday, 80% chance for the rain on Tuesday. And Sunday especially has at least a slight risk for severe storms popping up in the afternoon, Anthony. And hopefully we can avoid that problem. But all of us here at the CBS3 Weather Center yeah. are you know, vowing to help each other out if need be come Sunday. Sure. We certainly could use at least some rain. Yeah, and hopefully we get it. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. To bridge the gap of isolation during COVID-19, a rural St. Louis County man is taking on a new project. It's all in an effort, he says, to connect with his community. CBS3 photojournalist Wyatt Buckner takes us to North Star Township to show us what he's been working on. I started this probably about four days ago. We've got a great community here and a lot of neighbors and friends and due to the fact of the hard times that we've been having right now, it's hard to see everyone. We had a tree fall down, a, over a 200 year old white pine, and I decided to do something with it. Obviously, Minnesota Vikings. I looked at the piece laying on the ground and I thought, well, that would be a nice beard. I've dabbled in smaller items and projects, but this is the largest project I've ever taken on. Usually, a lot of people use this as a chainsaw, but I've been just using hand tools. I've got the ever-popular chisel. So, you know, you have the COVID-19, but then you have cabin fever. And cabin fever is a pretty strong item, especially with me. So I need to get out. I need to communicate with people. Good over there. Hi, thanks. They stop and see my progression. It changes every day. It's kind of unique. It's coming along really well, and it's neat to have something artsy and cultural, I think, here in the area. I get to see my friends and my neighbors every day. We keep able to keep our distance because they're in their vehicle and I'm out here. So how do you like the progress? Looks good. Majority of the conversation revolves around what are they going to see the next day. Sparks up the conversation and uh, how they're doing with, you know, work and life. Being able to see something different like that, it's a good change in pace when you're coming home from work. It's exciting. It's nice to have great neighbors. It's just my way of adding a little sunshine to what we got going on right now. And there is no current end goal in sight for the project. He's considering creating more sculptures like it in the future. The impacts of COVID-19 are taking a toll on all types of industries, including news. Newspapers across the country are experiencing financial challenges as advertisers pull out due to the pandemic. Tom Coombe, the editor of the weekly Ely Echo, says most papers rely on those advertisements to stay afloat in order to keep readers informed. 
I mean, there's nobody watching their city council, nobody covering their, uh, the, you know, their their kids' graduations or, or sporting events or, or or just happenings in the community. Uh, when, when those things go away, um, there's there's a bit of your community that that goes with it. The Ely Echo has not had to make any adjustments, uh, many adjustments rather, amidst the pandemic. But late last month, the Duluth News Tribune announced it was preparing to scale back its print editions. We hear from journalists impacted by the financial troubles tonight at 10. Coming up in sports, how UMD men's basketball is making a difference in the Twin Cities. Southwest Outlet is open for business. Now save up to 40% off store wide. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. Seeing our friends and family up close and personal with video chat is wonderful these days. And it's even better if you look and feel your best. So how does Plexiderm perform to shrink the appearance of wrinkles, under eye bags, and fine lines on a video conversation? It's amazing. My friends, my family, they can't believe it. They're all calling. There's been creams, there's been lotions, concealers. Nothing works like this. When I tried Plexiderm the first time, my daughter said, oh, Dad, did you get a haircut? And I said, no, I, I didn't get a haircut. I tried this Plexiderm product out. Oh, you look so much younger. I said, oh, thank you. We've created the best offer yet with our Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. We know you want to look and feel your best. So before you step in front of that video chat, Plexiderm your crow's feet, Plexiderm your fine lines, and Plexiderm your wrinkles and those pesky 11 lines between your eyes. And watch them visibly shrink from view in 10 minutes. Plexiderm works so well, makeup artists, celebrities in Hollywood, and even people across the country just like you feel years younger in minutes. Oh my God. I can't believe I have no lines in my face. I'm like 20 years younger. Yeah, this looks really good. All these lines are gone. Amazing. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I look amazing. It's like so full of myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Wow, is that really me? <laughs> the instant results are from silicates found in shell clay. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags and wrinkles from view in minutes. And the effects last up to 10 hours. Yes, the science is incredible, but the results even better. So if under eye bags and wrinkles make you look tired and older, take action with the Plexiderm 10 Minute Challenge. Look incredible on your next video call and get up to 50% off the normal retail price plus get free shipping visit plexiderm.com or call the number on your screen i'm caitlin and i'm into nursing we have small class sizes so we actually get to know each other know our instructors all the faculty at lake superior college they're here to help you succeed and choose the right path always on the go but want to keep up with the day's news don't worry now we are wherever you are. Traveling? No problem. Stream wherever, whenever with live local CBS3. Bonjour and dinner, I'm going to do. Hello, all my relatives. I'm Dr. Arnie Vainio, and I live in Duluth, and I love Duluth and the surrounding communities. Keeping COVID-19 from spreading is going to depend on all of us. Washing our hands frequently, keeping social distance, staying home if you can, and wearing a face mask is important. We need to keep our elders and those most vulnerable safe. This is about respect. This is about love. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. In the aftermath of what happened down in the Twin Cities, people who are already had little access to grocery stores now find themselves in an even bigger food dessert. Countless grocery stores, restaurants, and markets have either been closed or destroyed during the riots last week. UMD Hoops is doing something about it. Tomorrow, the team will drive down donations collected from earlier today down to Concordia, St. Paul, their rival in the conference. Athletes helping families are collecting non-perishable foods, clothing, and toiletries for the families of St. Paul. 
Yeah, we talk a lot with our guys, and we have even the last, you know, within the last week, just using our platform. A lot of people sometimes struggle with what to say or how to say it, but if you just kind of follow your heart, we've got a lot of really good, uh, good guys in our program, in our athletic department, in this community. You know, we've just tried to tell our guys and talk with our guys about standing next to each other and, and being together and then just trying to support. We talk a lot about how it's really important right now that we listen and we learn and we love and ultimately got to stand up for what's right. So I've been really uh, encouraging and, and I'm really proud and Coach Wick is really proud of our guys for standing up for what's right, being there for their teammates, for their former teammates and, and just doing the right thing. UMD has wrapped up their collection in Duluth, but if you happen to be in the Twin Cities tomorrow, Concordia St. Paul men's basketball, they're hosting the event down on their campus tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll have a link to the full info on our website, cbs3duluth.com. The awards just continue to roll in for former UMD defenseman and most recent Hoey Baker Award winner, Scott Perunovich. Perunovich has now earned the Jim Johansson College Player of the Year Award from USA Hockey Today. The award was established in 1994 to recognize the accomplishments of the top American-born player in men's college hockey. Prudovich was the second-ranked scoring defenseman in the NCAA this season with a team-leading and career-best 40 points in 34 games. As part of receiving the award, the USA Hockey Foundation will contribute $5,000 from the Jim Johansson Legacy Fund to the USA Hockey Youth Association of the Winner's Choice. And Prudovich, of course, has selected the Hibbing Chisholm Youth Hockey Association where he grew up. Well, this Monday on CBS3 Duluth, we are going to be chatting with the guys behind the Twin Ports Development Camp. The camp is back for another year, July 27th through the 30th for boys and girls in Squirt, 10U, Peewee, 12U, Bantam, 15U. You can head to TwinPortsDevelopment.com for more info and to sign up. And be sure to tune in on Monday when we chat with head camp instructor, Brett Olson. That's going to do it for sports for now. We'll have more here back tonight at 10. Kristen and Tony, I'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Kelly. Tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, there have been no new cases of COVID-19 in the past week in St. Louis County. Tonight, we sit down with the county health commissioner about what this data could mean for our area. And before we go, an annual Barnum High School tradition went virtual this year. The school holds a talent show on the last day of the year. They say it's a fun way to bring the school year to an end for students. Once COVID-19 forced them to close and go online, school leaders weren't show sure if the show would still go on. One teacher who also went to Barnum says he remembers the talent shows on the last day of school, and he wanted to make sure it still happened. It was really fun seeing the videos trickle in the last couple of weeks. Um, sitting down and just watching the kids do what they do that's not school related was really cool. The school sent out a message giving the students about two weeks to send in a submission for the talent show. If you would like to see their performances, you can find that link on our website. you have any hidden talents? Ooh. I don't think so. Oh, hula hoop. I'm oh. good at hula hooping. I was in a few competitions yeah. at a local store back in the day. Back in the day. That's something yeah. I just can't do, <laughs> even if I wanted to. I'll teach you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 10.